Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Game to Com video. AMD are working on a monstrous chip. Now, this chip is going to feature 32 Zen cores, Greenland architecture, high bandwidth memory 2, to be specific, 32 gigabytes or up to 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory 2. And the APU is going to be dubbed the Exascale Heterogeneous Processor. Now, this APU obviously is pushing towards the compute uh, space which is very similar in basic concepts to what we've seen in let's say the PlayStation 4. I'm not going to go super in depth into how heterogeneous architecture works because we've already discussed it a couple of times especially before the PS4 was officially revealed but if you need more information on that you can go ahead and check out old articles on the website or you can check them uh, videos on the channel but effectively it just means that the GPU and the CPU are going to be addressing the same memory space this means that if the CPU needs to let's say send data to the GPU rather than it having to mirror data a couple of times over it means that basically it can just simply say hey GPU you take over processing this data and then when the GPU is finished doing its thing it can then say to the CPU hey dude, I'm done with that, you can, you know, get on and kind of do what you need to do with it, and it makes things a lot more efficient and effective, and as you know, AMD are really pushing towards a compute at the moment. Now, this chip is scheduled for some point in 2016 at the earliest, and the roadmaps even hint it could even go up to 2017. As one can imagine, this most likely means that we're not going to be seeing it with anything other than Zen, because it just would not make sense, and excavator cores just wouldn't make any sense whatsoever, Let's just be honest. Now, high bandwidth memory 2 is very scalable, but from the diagrams that have been leaked, up to 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory 2 is shown on board. Now, you might think to yourself, hmm, that's actually pretty impressive, right? 32 gigs? Turns out that it's actually scalable. There is ability with this uh, design to actually feature DDR4 memory as well. Now this is actually very important for multiple reasons because for example let's say high-end servers you could have a ridiculous amount of memory. Uh, you know 32 gigabytes for a server is actually not much it's kind of pitiful but when you were to let's say you could easily create a very high-end system quite easily very scalable with this type of uh, with this type of APU. Now, we don't know massive amounts about the exact core count when it comes to the Greenland, unfortunately, so we don't know the amount of shader processors, but given the fact that there are 32 Zen cores, or up to 32 Zen cores, remember there is actually a 16 Zen core model of this, it really wouldn't make sense for the, the GPU to be pitiful. So we could have at least 2,000, 3,000, possibly even 4,000 stream processors. In other words, there's going to be a lot of T-flops of computing power. Um, theoretically, at least, it should be at least kind of getting into the neighborhood of the R9 290 or even the free, or even possibly the Fiji, maybe even the um, Fury X. Who knows what we're going to have in that you know point in time. I guess it depends on die shrinks, that type of stuff. Now, it's very likely that this processor, as I said, is going to be targeted to the very high-end market. But the general compute functionality is going to really hinge on the 2.5D interposer. Now, that you might remember from other technologies like, let's say, the Fury. Effectively, it just means that the CPU and the GPU will sit alongside the memory rather than it having it stacked on top with like a traditional 3D die. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there will be a 16-core variant, but getting back to the Zen itself, and there have been multiple leaks and rumours and bits of information that have popped up about Zen, um, so I'm not going to go through everything all over again, but we do know that each Zen core will have access to 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache, and four Zen cores, which basically form a module, will share 8 megabytes of level 3 cache. This is very similar in principle to, let's say, the AMD Jaguars, where they have a specific amount of level 2 cache, their own uh, level 3 cache, and then, of course, um, there can be some problems with cache miss. Let's say, for example, the application wants to access data that's in uh, another qu another quad cores um, 
cache. So let's say, for example, you've got two modules with the PS4 or the Xbox One. Uh, each module, of course, contains uh, four processors. Let's say you've called it module A and B. Let's say a processor needs to access a piece of data that's in a different module there can be a bit of a uh, slowdown when it comes to the access of that data this is something that even Naughty Dog and other developers, developers excuse me have discussed but it does equate to a hell of a lot of memory in fact the full die could have up to 64 megabytes of level 3 cache and 16 megabytes of level 2 cache obviously there is a specific difference level 2 cache is actually faster uh, so it operates a lot quicker level 3 cache is bigger but it's slower so there is that trade-off that you've got to remember and as I mentioned each core is capable of handling up to two threads so this is very much more close to how Intel do things with let's say uh, even Skylake coming up with Skylake but even you know any of their processors basically even the Pentium 4 very similar type of way um, now what we do know is the processor is supposedly gonna have eight DDR4 channels so in terms of memory it's going to be massive because I did mention earlier of course it's got 32 gigabytes of um, of uh, HBM2 but the capacity for the DDR channel from earlier leaks we've heard that each channel is going to have 256 gigabytes per channel that is insanity in terms of how much memory now I'm guessing this is my theory, this is my theory that it's not going to be like what you're going to be seeing in your system in two days time or let's say two years time, however that makes much more sense. This instead is going to be for server markets, for high-end compute. But I tell you why I'm kind of excited because it could trickle down the basic premise of the technology, could trickle down to other uh, compute functionality it could for example trickle down to small form factor systems it could trickle down to let's say laptops or even you know uh, let's say well, a good one of course that would definitely be any smart technologies for example tablets or oh I don't know a console because this technology in theory could be very, very cool for consoles. And I'm not necessarily saying the the, um, the NX or whatever the hell Nintendo's console ends up being called. But it would make sense if a variant of this or maybe its predecessor was used. Now obviously there is a lot of lead time of technology. That's one of the reasons that the Xbox One, the PS4 used the GPUs and the CPUs and that type of thing they did. But it would make sense if the... Uh, next generation at Nintendo console did have an improved variant of an APU that was seen inside the Xbox One the PS4 simply because it would just make sense on every single which way but loose because developers prefer uh, unified memory systems when it comes to consoles because they're fixed amounts of memory therefore they know that you know they can at least have the extra freedom to spend that data however they want plus Computer is going to become increasingly more important because, let's face it, CPUs and consoles are not amazingly powerful. Uh, you do get the odd occasional time where that's not necessarily the case. For example, the PS3 CPU, the cell, is actually quite, quite a performer, but generally speaking, it's just the case where the CPU inside the consoles aren't quite up to snuff and this is definitely the case with PS4 and Xbox One. Xbox One does have a slight advantage because of the high clock speed. Uh, not a massive clock speed advantage but certainly does have a clock speed advantage. Anyway, this is kind of cool. It's a bit of a shame that we're not going to be seeing this monster most likely anyway in our systems anytime soon but it does give you an indication of things to come. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.